Hello and welcome to this quick tip. This quick tip came from this great question from Rando Mac. He was asking, is it normal for there to be sparks when you plug a battery into a model? And it's such a great question. I thought I'd answer that. So the first thing I guess is, are those sparks normal? Well, the answer is, yep, they absolutely are. You'll see them all more on higher voltage batteries. So typically 2 and 3S, you won't see them that much. 4, 5, 6S and above in 12S setups, you'll get some pretty healthy sparks as you plug everything together. Think of the example, if you've ever done it, of reconnecting a charged car battery into a car. When you reconnect that terminal, even though it's 12 volts, there's usually a nice little popping sound and a little blue spark as you make that connection. However, while that initial spark when you plug things in is normal, sparking after that is a very bad sign and you need to unplug the battery. But as you plug it in, that initial snap or pop as you make that connection is pretty standard and nothing to worry about. So the next thing to talk about then is, well, why does it happen? Well, it happens because when you make that initial electrical connection between the battery and whatever you're plugging it into, there is a rush of current that goes into the circuit. And that only happens for a fraction of a second. The blink of an eye, even faster than that. But there's an awful lot of current that flows. That current causes that little arc to happen, and that's what causes the spark and the popping noise. Now, a big part of this is that there are lots of things like capacitors inside a circuit. And capacitors look like these little round cans that you see in flight controllers and models all the time. These capacitors store electrical charge, and they're completely empty when you first plug the power in. However, when you first plug the power, the electricity runs through the circuit and it charges the inside of the capacitor up. Once that capacitor is charged up, then the current stops flowing. In fact, you can see this when you check the power leads on a model using an ohmmeter. When you first connect the leads, the number is very low, a low resistance, i.e. dead short, but then very quickly you'll see the resistance rise. And that's because the minute current that the ohmmeter is using to measure the resistance actually charges those capacitors. And it takes a little bit longer because the current that's been put into the circuit is incredibly low, as opposed to just when you slam 12, 16 or more voltage in there, that's that little spark. So can you avoid these sparks in the first place? Well, the main thing to do is just make that connection from the battery to the model with conviction. Once the capacitors are charged, they will hold on to that charge for a period of time. So you'll find that it might snap once, but then the next time you plug the connector in, it doesn't do it. And that's because those elements like the capacitors are all kind of ready to go and are storing some voltage inside them. So it doesn't need to pull the current to do that charge up. However, in bigger systems where you're using much higher voltages and those higher voltages are going to push even more current through and cause some pretty nasty arcs when you first plug the battery in, there are specialized connectors. Things like this, for example, from 3DXR. And the way it works is the tip of one of the connections is actually made so that it's got a resistance in it and that limits the amount of current. So when you first make that connection, that current is limited so it can charge all that stuff up at a relatively safe level and then as you continue to plug the two connector halves together it makes the connection for how you're going to fly. Those anti-spark connectors are very handy if you're using things like 8 or 12 S setups on larger models. Last part of this is well does that cause any damage? Well it kind of does on a minuscule level. That little arc is going to potentially damage the surface of the conductor. So it's not something that you want to do over a period of time. And this is the reason why I would always recommend when you're doing things like charging your batteries on a battery charger, that you plug in the power connection first. That's usually going to be an XT60, but it could be an XT30 on smaller batteries up to XT90 and above on the big chunky stuff. You plug that power lead in first and let any spark that's going to happen happen on that big connector and then plug in the balance tap afterwards. That way it isn't all of that current that's trying to be pulled through those very small connectors on the balance tap on the battery and it'll make it last that little bit longer. So Rando Man, hopefully that answers the question for you. Yes, sparks are absolutely normal. 
Yes, they are potentially causing a little bit of damage, but it's microscopic. There are ways around it. And there are also a couple of ways that you can reduce it using some of those anti-spark connectors. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.